everybody. How's it going? It's t-shirt weather in the shop. It's freezing cold outside. We got dirty hands. That means we're having fun in the power saw shop. How you guys doing today? I'm having a good time. Uh, just pottering in the saw shop like we do. What am I doing today? Uh, I was doing a little more looking and measuring on the Echo CS670 turd saw. I also have the cylinder on backwards. There we go. This thing's been a lot of fun. Uh, I'm, it's good to see that you guys are enjoying this build. Uh, some of the funnest projects I've done on YouTube have just been something I conjured up one morning over coffee. And uh, it's good. It's good that we're all on the same wavelength. What am I doing today? Well, I want to run this Super Pro 70. Uh, I've done the port work on it. I'm going to clean up this piston. This piston's... Uh, it has light, light scoring, and uh, a couple of you guys said, how do you clean up your pistons? So let's, uh, let's do it together. I'll show you guys how I prep a piston or how I clean one. Okay, I got you guys set up here. These McCullough pistons are pressed on. Now, I'd like to avoid removing this piston for right now. Um, I'm going to get a new one in the mail. When that happens, we're, we'll tear this saw back down and, and install a new piston. Sounds kind of backwards, but you know what, guys? This is a prototype saw, and uh, part of my journey of learning to port echoes is I have to do prototype work and figure out what I can and can't do with these saws. These things are a little different. Um, they, they're, they're, how they come about their timing numbers and how they work is a little different. So, Okay, guys. We have our piston assembly here, cylinder. Um, this thing got caked right here, okay? You can see how it corresponds. The exhaust port got caked with carbon. The carbon starts to protrude into the cylinder and eventually that carbon, which is hard as a rock, starts rubbing the piston and you end up with carbon scoring, okay? Um, use good oil, guys. Warm your saws up. Uh, mix your oil appropriately and use them um, When you run a saw cold, I find you're gonna get this really bad uh, saws need to run hot uh, Up to operating temperature or they tend to really pack the carbon in there in a hurry um, I've noticed that uh, Loggers and that doesn't matter what oil they use they tend to not have problems with this um, and, I, and I think I, I've equated that Sorry I bumped the camera. I've equated that to their saws run nice and warm all day. Okay, so we have we have this piston. Uh, I marked the ports just with a marker. I'm checking for free port and skirt length. Uh, some of you guys have asked about that. Now here's the first thing I do when I'm gonna clean or dress a piston. I'm feeling for sharp edges. Well, there's a sharp edge here, sharp edge there. I can feel it. So I'm probably gonna go around the entire periphery of this piston and clean it up. But name of the game today is we want to clean the crown of the piston and we want to clean this up. This piston is pressed on. Notice there's no sir clips. So we, I want to clean this up and keep it clean. I want to keep the bottom end uh, free of sandpaper and I'm going to try very hard to keep it out of there. Okay, and what I'm going to do, you guys, will, you guys can see this. Uh, being a tin basher, I got tape. Just pulled this out of my work truck and uh, I'm going to take this tape right here okay and I'm going to tape off the ends of the wrist pin okay and make sure that nothing can get in there I'm going to do that we'll be right back okay guys I got these ends covered I'm going to flip this over to the side with the scoring and get you guys zoomed in here so you can actually see what I'm doing okay we have our scoring I'm gonna take this is 600 grit extra extra fine sandpaper okay I'm just gonna rub it off now we are not gonna get rid of all of this like you the scores will still be there guys okay I want the high spots gone because those high spots will rub on the cylinder and will create friction which will melt the aluminum and will get transfer on the cylinder again 
I'm doing this, a uh, couple of you guys asked, how do you clean up a scored piston? Now again, typically I would replace the piston. Um, this saw, there's a few scores in the cylinder. Uh, it is a turd saw. It seems to be a reoccurring theme on this channel. Uh, no harm, no foul. I'll run this thing and then I will replace the piston in it after. Um, after I run this saw, I'm going to tear it down again and I'm going to study my own work and see what's going on in there. Okay guys, so this is how I dress a piston. I run my nail over there. I don't want it to catch. Now see, the scoring is still there lightly. Okay, and you don't want to go too deep because if you sand this away, this thing's going to rattle in the bore, in the cylinder, okay? Now we do the other side. I'm just going to completely go around this piston and clean it up, okay? And remember, these edges are sharp. I feel it on here. I'm going to get rid of that. You can use, you can dress it with a file. Uh, a raker file works good for this. These ones aren't terrible. I'm just going to break the edge. Okay, stuff like this, super important if you're building a saw that's going to giddy up. Uh, all these little steps um, will, will help you succeed. It's the way you prepare the saw, the motor, every little inch of it. If you want to make like maximum, maximum power, which is, I want to see how high I can turn this thing up. Uh, we had so much fun with that home light, guys. We might as well do it with a Mac. Um, these are hard to work on, but I'm, I'm, I'm actually enjoying it, guys. Um, more brain work for me. Okay, that carpet on the top is quite heavy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take some coarse sandpaper. Okay, and I'm just going to scuff it. Again, check your piston over for defects, dings, dents, just anything that you can see or feel with your hand. Your fingertips are your best guide for the condition or the sharpness. Run your fingers over it. Um, a lot of guys that port saws, I know, they're, they're older fellows, their eyes aren't as good. They just use their finger because the sensory and the, the tip of your finger, you'll feel those sharp edges. I do it because uh, I can't always see the best. And, and I mean, really, if your finger rubs over it and it's smooth, like this right now feels great. Okay. Again, this corner is sharp. I'm going to get rid of that. Sharp enough to cut sandpaper, guys. You don't want that. There we go. It, it doesn't take much. Now, when I'm done with this, because this is a pressed-on piston, I'm going to give this thing a good bath. And, uh, because I want to keep anything out of here. Okay. But this fine grit paper, it doesn't take much off, and it really doesn't throw chips or shavings, so... I'm, I'm comfy with that. Okay, this piston's kind of haggard, but I mean, what if you can't get a piston for a saw, guys? You know? What if you can't get a piston for your saw? You can get rings or, or whatever. What, what if you're stuck? Well, if you can't find another piston that'll fit out of another saw, or you don't have a lathe to make it fit, what do you do? Try this, it works. I've done this before in other saws, and they're still running today. There's actually a little ding on the bottom of the skirt here. And this saw is 40 years old, give or take. Darn near 40 years old. Actually, this saw is closer to 50 years old. It's probably about, you know, mid-70s, 45 years old. So, who knows what's been done to this thing. I think somebody's been in this saw before. Uh, I have a hunch. So, okay, guys. Okay, guys. There's your cleaned up piston. Okay, those scores are still there, but I can't feel them. They're still there. Those are just gonna hold oil, guys. Really, uh, not the worst deal. It is what it is, right? Got to keep these old Macs going. We pause you here. 
Okay guys, just like that, that's literally how quickly you can clean up a piston. And again, those sharp edges will kill a saw sometimes. I've had brand new pistons and I'm not going to... I'm not going to say the name or I'm not slagging any company, but I've had brand new pistons, OEM pistons, uh, aftermarket pistons that have had sharp edges on them. And what will end up happening with the sharp edges, you'll see it after you run the saw often. There'll be, uh, there could be big scratches or just stuff that doesn't look good. So um, I dress every piston that goes into my saws generally. I never used to, but now... Uh, it's worth it. it. It really is. The piston will look cleaner after it's run than almost when it was brand new and you put it in. Um, whether it does anything or not, I don't know, but I think it does. <laughs> A lot of porting, guys, is what how you feel. and That's why I always laugh. We as men like to argue semantics, you know, my way, not your way. And it's like, a lot of it is just how we feel or what we think it does to the saw. Well, I feel that stress risers are bad. So I'm gonna get rid of them. And we're gonna just give this a good drink. And there we go. This piston don't look so bad now. Yeah, it's got a few dings on it. Next thing you can do, and this saw it's gonna be a little bit more difficult because of the fact that it's a clamshell. I dropped the piston in there. Listen guys. Listen, there is almost no play in that piston, and that's why you want to use ultra fine sandpaper. If you use a coarse sandpaper and you're trying to get rid of those ridges, those scores, remember if you take um, if you take too much material off here, it'll rattle in the bore, and you'll have a knock when the saw's running, and then eventually. I see this on a lot of um, professional saws that I do. They'll break the bottom of the skirt off. And that's because the piston's starting to wear and it'll do this. And eventually what happens, it wears the bottom of the skirt to the point. It'll actually catch and it'll break uh, the bottom of the skirt off. So just a little uh, tip or trick. Um, you see that a lot on saws with a lot of time. The bottom of the skirt gets really thin. So there you guys go, it's just kind of what I'm doing today. I'm just prepping this Mac. Uh, I want to get this thing back together and I want to run it. Um, we made gaskets on film. Uh, thanks for watching that. It was riveting. <laughs> it was okay. I, I, I like that video. I'm just trying to share the old school ways because a lot of people are just, they're unaware. So, okay guys, gonna continue on this Mac. We're gonna use those gaskets that we built the other day on film and I wanna hear this thing run again. We couldn't run it in the shape it was in. Typically I would, but this saw, it was, it had too many things wrong with it that I figured there's no point even taking it to the woods. There you guys go. As always, thanks for watching. Take her easy. Later.